so good morning. Well, I just went inside, brushed my teeth, got a little freshened up. Um, went and they have a cafeteria here at the uh, Laredo um, terminal. And uh, went up and got a beef and potato tacos. They're pretty good. So that's what the little bag is. So I'm gonna go back to the truck, have lunch. Still no word on a reload. So, I don't know. It seems to happen every time I come down here. Uh, they gotta stop coming down. <laughs> but the miles are good. It's a good, decent run, so. I don't think I'll stop. Yeah, so here I am back at the truck. I was just talking to work, my dispatcher. There's a message there for possibly a load going to Calgary from down here, so I might do that as long as uh, time permits for the hours that I have left. But, um, so here's the, uh, here's these little tacos I was telling you about. They're actually really good. They put a beef and potato mixture with spices inside and then they grill the taco actually a little bit. It's pretty good. Some pretty tasty Mexican food. Um, well, you're so close, so it's pretty authentic, but it might be Americanized a bit, but I doubt it. So we're going to wait for that, figure out what's going on. And uh, maybe, yeah, maybe we'll be running to Calgary. So, see how things go. So, we managed to get rolling today. <clears throat> it was either sit for another day or take this load. So, we got to go more southeast into Texas. Uh, I know most of you think that Laredo, you, it's not much deeper you can go. Well, you can. And we're about to. We are on the US 83. We're going to, what is it again? Sal, uh, Salcaco, <laughs> something like that. Texas. I'll figure it out. And I'll tell you guys later. And we're maybe, I don't know, a half hour out of Laredo. If you look to the right, Half a mile to the right, and there's Mexico. And uh, that, that's how close we are right now to Mexico. We're going to be running down along the border almost all the way to this little town that I can't pronounce. <laughs> so, yeah, it was kind of interesting getting to this point though. It, I never went that way. I've never been down this way, so this is good. This It's something new. And we're going to be taking this load up to Calgary, Alberta. So it's going to be a long run. And then from there, I'll probably get something in Canada, come back down to the States, deliver that, then go home, get something to go home. So maybe two, three weeks before I'm home. Ah, two weeks. Two more weeks, I should say. Close to it. But so far, this, this section isn't bad to drive on. It's a typical U.S. highway. You know, two lanes. I mean, it's not quite even. You're rocking a lot on it, but it's not too bad. We fueled up at the Flying J there in Laredo, um, just because there is a couple truck stops that I saw down this way a little bit, but are you taking the ramp? Well, oh, geez. It's amazing how they slow down on the interstate when the ramp is designed for your transition in speed. 
coming on, going off. You're supposed to be using the ramp to change your speed, not, not the highway. But anyway, I know some, some ramps are too short, especially for the trucks. And I mean, that, that goes without saying, and in those cases it's understandable, but that situation there was lots of, lots of ramp, no need to back off that much. So yeah, then we'll be taking this up to Calgary, I don't know exactly what way we'll be going all the way up. Interstate this far down here. <laughs> never really paid attention before because never thought I'd be coming down in this area. Just goes to show you though, you never know where freight's going to come out of. So, but so far the trek down hasn't been bad. Pretty good. I saw a Jeep with these rims that are exactly what I'm looking for. I mean, I, I thought I had the rims that I wanted uh, for the Jeep already picked out. They're the, um, their works is the, the, the brand I was gonna go with. Nice black red design, but I saw a girl driving a white Jeep that had these black rims with a little bit of a red accent and it had these nice chrome oversized rivets around around the edge not not like a bead locker it, it wasn't a bead locker it was just part of the rim and oh man they look really good I I snagged a picture of it I, I freaking hope it turns out because I got to try to find these rims now the, the only marking on it there's a, a B right in the middle the letter B like and uh, the B was written in red and it was almost like a the B that they use for the Bentley, kind of like that style, that font, I think. Uh, at least that's what it reminded me of at quick glance. But so I got to try to find those now. That's going to be my mission to find those rims because that is perfect. Because I'm I'm looking for black and red because we have the red accents with the anvil and. And the black, like the tops are black and all that stuff, right? So, be really nice with the little subtle red accents. And it's just, it's almost like a little red plate in between each spoke. It didn't go all the way around, so it, it looks sharp. And then the, the, the big rivet nuts or whatever on it kind of has that chrome feel. Like, you know, when we put the nice big chrome lug nut covers on our rims on the rigs that uh, it, it, it kind of felt like that so it was almost like combining two worlds 
and and I think they look pretty good. And when they were moving, looking at those lug nuts spin while I I call them lug nuts, but they're not where the lug nuts are. But looking at those oversized rivets or nuts, whatever they are around the the edge, uh, there's only maybe about eight of them or so, maybe eight or ten of them around. So it wasn't like. 30 rivets, but seeing it spin driving down the road, oh, it looked really good. I gotta find me those rims. If the picture came out, I'll, I'll try to pop it in the clip right here or something. So you can see what I mean. Hey, hey, maybe you guys know that manufacturer. You know, if you do, leave a comment. That'd be cool. It's, it's kind of hard to when, when you see something on the road, it's kind of hard to find it, usually. Unless somebody knows exactly what it is. But yeah, so that's how it's going so far. We're about 24 minutes from the customer. Or, well, 24 miles, probably like half an hour. Because once we get off this little interstate tube here, we're going to have to go down some, some roads. And, I Google mapped it and I, uh, I even did satellite view. I can see the complex. I think I know how I gotta get in there, but we'll, we'll have to take it one turn at a time, I think. So yeah, this is McAllen, Texas. Looks pretty built up, you know, like really, really new school for for kind of being in such a uh, an old neighborhood most of the towns I drove through recently uh, you know your, your typical off the beaten path towns you know a couple little stores here and there with you know some buildings that sh you don't know how they're still standing you know <coughs> and a lot of the houses looking that way this is uh this is all a new development so there must be a lot of commerce here or industrial somewhere to be able to support all this with residents and whatnot so right now I'm uh, I'm writing this middle name lane because there is a lot of ramps going off and on, off and on, and there's nobody behind me right now, so just kind of taking advantage of not having to stop at every ramp, while not stop and slow down. So the number two east is what we want to stay on there. I don't think I've ever touched this interstate ever. Nope, not ever. Somebody got married over there. Oh, looks like we got some cluster about to happen up here. Oh, and this truck, look at it. judgment makes me stop anyway and then now he now he's clear to come over uh, see, it's just something four wheelers don't think about you know the safest place driving around a truck is to be behind them not in front of them you know, not even beside them behind because if he has to slam on the brakes you will if you're paying attention your vehicle will definitely be able to stop it in half the distance that he does if you put that car in front of the truck oh, it just doesn't work that math is is not right so bad things happen and all your remainders will be all over the floor all over the highway the interstate Here's something I never could comprehend. Here's a guy on a little crotch rocket. He 
has got stretched a bit. No helmet. I know there's no law here in Texas for uh, making it mandatory to wear a helmet, but even if it's not mandatory, like me personally, I would wear it. I, I, I couldn't imagine wiping out like at this speed, 60, 65 mile an hour. You, you, you basically have increased your chances to 80% that you will not live. Suicide, in my opinion. I don't know. I like bikes, don't get me wrong, I love them. Crotch rockets aren't my style, but I can appreciate it. I, I like the cruisers, not necessarily Harley or anything like that. I like the, uh, I like victories. I like the 8-Ball and the, um, what's the other one? Uh, the Hardball. Those are the two that I like. Uh, the Victory Vision's real nice, too, if you're into touring bikes. I like just cruisers, really. That's kind of my style. But yeah, wear a helmet. Damn it. Jeez. Even if you're on a bicycle, wear a damn helmet. You only got one grape and it can't be replaced. <laughs> if that grape gets squished, end of story. Why not protect it? You could be the best rider in the world. You gotta worry about the other idiot. That's my safety tip for today. Obviously, just my opinion. So, here I am in the dock at the customer. Wait till you see how tight this is. It's really, like, the doors, I don't know if you can see them way down there. Try and get as close as possible. I can barely fit between these two trailers. But those doors are like practically kissing. This is how tight this place is. I haven't had a backup like that in a while. And just so you don't think it's uh, just one side. Look at that. Now those doors are practically touching. That's a tight back end. I haven't had one that tight in a while. I mean, <clears throat> there's no room for air at all. Zero. Zip. Oh well. We got her done. No damage. And we're signed in. Just waiting for them to load me up. And we're good to go then. Just going to start it up, put some AC on. what they did back there was they pulled my red line for the trailer uh, he didn't tell me that they were gonna do that I went in to check in I came back all the air was depleted out of my tanks so um, and my red valve was pulled on the trailer usually when I'm docked into a place like this one it's sloped back like this so that we're, we're sitting up the tractor sitting higher up I won't use my trailer brake so I'll just use the tractor because the trailer's resting against the building it's not going anywhere so that's uh that's kind of what I do but um, so what happened is he came over undid my red airline for the trailer uh, and what that does is that puts the spring brakes on on the trailer so I guess it's their policy here, which isn't out of the out of the, the norm. I mean, it, it happens. Um, but I wish he would have told me that they were going to do that because then I would have just pulled the trailer brakes. Because when he popped that valve off, I guarantee you there was a sudden gush of air. And uh, 
then my tractor's own uh, safety mechanism popped the, the my my trailer brake here. So see how it's pulled out? I didn't have this pulled out when I went in. So and then they put a little glad hand lock on on so we can't reattach and take off without their permission, I guess. Um, it's a safety thing. Yeah, I'm sure you've heard the stories of forklift guy in the trailer and the driver goes to pull out or whatever. When your trailers are this close together, you can't put a, a dock light. So, yeah. I guess that's their safety thing to make sure you don't leave. But, so we're going to sit and wait. And I got to figure out how to get out of here and where we're going. Because we came in the wrong way. So here we are, Edinburgh, Texas, at the Flying J. We're all parked in for the night. So. Please drive to got, highlighted route. No, we're not driving anymore tonight. Sorry, I'm done, and you should be done too. Let's turn that off. But, uh,. Yeah, I was at the customer for about two and a half, three hours, getting loaded. Uh, took a little longer than I wanted. Massive paperwork that comes out of that place. Holy crap, they should really organize it better. But I'll have about 40 or 50 pages to scan in tomorrow. That's just crazy how they organize their paperwork. It's basically a bill of lading and a customs document for almost every box on the on the trailer so yeah <laughs> uh, people really need to cut down on paper you know that could be pretty much summed up in about two or three pages but anyway I'm, I'm uh, getting tired and cranky so <laughs> uh, bitching about nothing I'll figure it out in the morning um, but yeah so it wasn't too bad it was an okay day didn't get much driving in just because of such a late start I was up early didn't get my load until about 1 and then by the time I hunted around for an empty and all that and then I had to kind of go six miles out of the way to fuel because uh, on the route to where I was going there was no fuel stops there for the three hours I wasn't gonna make it there are fuel stops coming back because I'm coming a different way back but so th that went yeah, all right you know the good news is 12,000 pounds going up to where, Calgary so that's like 2,500 miles with only 12,000 pounds that'll be good good day for fuel mileage and that's important very important. Two things you can control. Your miles per gallon. You can't control the weight, but you can control your miles per gallon by driving correctly according to your truck. Whatever she likes the best. You'll figure it out after you do runs and runs and try different things, but you'll figure out what she likes. And the second thing you can control is the price of fuel. So, you can't always buy the cheapest, but you're going to want to buy the cheapest in the area that you need to fuel. So, I mean, if you're going to play the chase game all the time, you're going to drive yourself batty. You know, 50 gallons here to get you to a certain point, you're almost empty again, and then you fill up at the absolute cheapest. You keep doing it and keep doing it and keep doing it, you're going to lose your flipping mind. <laughs> you know? There are guys out there that do it, and you know what, kudos to you, but, you know, roughly about three-eighths or half a tank, I'm pretty much hunting in that, in that area, wherever that vicinity is going to be, I'll be looking at the fuel prices in there, and uh, just grab the cheapest one from that point, so, but I'm rambling on again because it's the end of the night. Uh, I think I need to get something to eat, and I'm going to do some editing. If I can stay awake, I might watch some TV or some YouTube. I think uh, some guys got some new videos up, so I'll check them out. 
and uh, we will see tomorrow. I was going to do head cam um, today, but by the time I got out of there, it was pitch black. It was dark, so that footage would be useless. All you'd see is the dash lights, really. So um, tomorrow, maybe I'll find a stretch there where I can set her up, and we'll uh, we'll get some more head cam footage in there. But for right now, I'm signing off. So, I don't know what you guys are doing. You're probably going to go to another video. I would. Go to one of mine. Anyway. Like, subscribe, share, and I will see you tomorrow.